بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه أستعين وأصلي وأسلم على خاتم النبيين محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطاهرين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting, to accept our prayers, to accept our listening and recitation of the Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan. Ameen Allahumma Ameen. Beloved brothers and respective sisters, we move on to a different name. And inshallah tonight, brothers and sisters, I will speak, be speaking about two names. Both of the names, brothers and sisters, complete the picture, a full, clear picture that describes and shows the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first name, brothers and sisters, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling himself Al-Mu'min. Al-Mu'min. Al-Mu'min, brothers and sisters, has different meanings. And of course, as all of you know, bi-idhnillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the mu'mineen, among the believers. And we always use the term or the word mu'min to describe Allah's believers. And this is also in the Qur'an, in many pages in the Qur'an. And last year, for 30 nights, we were calling upon those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called upon, O you who believe, al-iman. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself mu'min, it has a different meaning. The mu'min here, brothers and sisters, is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained in Surah Ali Imran, شَهِدَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ وَأُولُوا الْعِلْمِ قَائِمٌ بِالْقِسْطِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnessed for himself that there is no God but him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnessed for himself that there is no God but him. And also his angels and those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given knowledge. So this is the first understanding of the word mu'min and name mu'min. The second, brothers and sisters, is truthful. Is truthful. So the first one, he is the source of, of faith. And the second one is to be truthful in your promise. And we find this in Surah Yusuf, where the brothers of, Surah, of, of Yusuf salams, speak and say to Yaqub, as Allah recorded in the Quran, وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُؤْمِنٍ لَنَا وَلَوْ كُنَّا صَادِقِينَ And you will not believe us and what we are saying even if we were truthful people. So they use the word Iman. And when our ulama speak about Iman, they say, huwa tasdiq billahi azza wa jal. Is to believe in Allah, to acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So of course the word mu'min, brothers and sisters, in the Arabic language, also describes the one who is truthful and honest. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most truthful. And he says that in many ayat in Quran, وَعْدَ اللَّهِ لَا يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهِ That this is Allah's promise and Allah never breaks a promise. In many ayat in the Quran, لَا يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ الْمِعَادِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not break a promise. Uh, and of course, you could flip the pages of the Quran, you will see that Allah keeps on repeating this, this word and these ayat. So we are talking about someone that keeps his promise. Someone that keeps his word. Someone that will never back out. Someone that will continue to support you. And this is not enough, and this is where Muhaymin comes in. Because you can have a person, you can have a human being that could support you all the way. Or could claim to support you. You can have a person that can tell you, or will tell you, that you have my word, and suddenly he breaks his word. And if he decides, to proceed in continuing this promise, holding on to this promise, in the future he or she might not be able to carry this promise because they're weak. Sometimes they have their own agendas, sometimes they have their own problems. So they did give a promise. And they were honest in their promise, but they were not able to fulfill that promise. And this is where Muhaymin comes in. Muhaymin, brothers and sisters, هو الذي يسيطر على كل شيء. Muhaymin, brothers and sisters, the understanding of Muhaymin is the one whom controls everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not only give you the promise, He also tells you, I am the Muhaymin and I control everything. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controlled everything, for an example, as we have kings of our countries today, they claim to control their country. 
They claim that yes, we are controlling these people and we are in full control, but they are not mu'mineen in their promises. They are not truthful in their promises. So a king can also own his people as they claim. He could also own the land, but he or she do not fulfill their promise. And on the other side, you can have a person that wants to fulfill their promise, but they're not able to do so. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives himself two amazing names. That he is al-mu'min, he gives you his word and he gives you his promise. And also subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the muhaymin. Brothers and sisters, these two names are very important because this is where we go wrong when it comes to our aqidah, our Islamic theology. That this is where many people give up in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That did Allah say he is al-muhaymin? The answer is yes. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say he is the mu'min? The answer is yes. So why do we see the problems around the world? Why is this taking place and why is that taking place? And this is where we begin to question Allah even though Allah spoke about Himself and He said, I am the most truthful and I am the most giving and controlling. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to us as human beings, this is something natural to begin with. But brothers and sisters, if someone carries in with these ideas, it can be very dangerous for his iman and it could affect his iman. Because things like this even took place, brothers and sisters, by the prophets. The prophets of Allah. Some prophets, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, that the moment these prophets would almost give up and think that there is no more hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory, this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down his victory. Musa alayhi salatu was salam in the most critical times, as he was taking out the people of Egypt, the Jews of Egypt, and from the, from the back he was chased by Fir'aun and 600,000 men fully prepared to kill the Jews of Egypt. 600,000 soldiers were behind Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And Musa alayhi salatu was salam knows that Allah is the mu'min and Allah is the muhaymin. And of course, as he reaches a dead end next to the sea and no one is there to support him, and the Jews begin to mock him, and they begin to insult him, and they begin to disbelieve in his message, salawatullahi alayhi, one of the greatest prophets, one of the greatest prophets, and we learn so much lessons from Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, as he reaches the sea, and there is no one that could help him, and everyone has given, given up, and everyone has lost hope, and they're insulting Musa, where is your Lord? SubhanAllah, even though they have received previous miracles, but they gave up. Because they are judging brothers and sisters according to their own personal you know, views. What do they see? What is relevant to them? What is easy for them? What is possible for them? So they are judging Musa according to their own personal power, which is very weak. And they forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's when Allah told Musa, subhanAllah, and before them, this is what we learned from Musa, when he was told all of this, he said, Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. That no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me and he is going to guide me. And this is where Musa alayhi salatu was salam was given the order to touch and to hit the water with a stick. And this is where everyone was able to proceed and to move on. And subhanAllah gave them a pathway where they were safe from Fir'aun. I will end with this story, brothers and sisters, which is very important from Sirah. That even among the Sahaba and the Prophet's time, sometimes we rush into judgment where we might receive a promise. But we want this promise to be fulfilled right now because I need it to be fulfilled. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when is the best time for this promise to take place. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wakes up one day and he tells his sahaba that I seen a dream. And as we know, for the prophets when they see a dream, it is a form of revelation of wahi. He says, I see in this dream that we are entering Mecca and we have shaved our heads and trimmed our hair. And he then tells his companions, let's go for Umrah. All the Sahaba are excited. All the Sahaba are prepared and they start in this journey. Khalas, the Prophet himself has promised, لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ دَاخِلِينَ 
آمنين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا تخافون فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is entering with his companions and of course what takes place between him and the people of Quraysh and the conflict took place and here comes Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he tells the sahaba I think that we could not perform Umrah this year the Sahaba then got up, they were confused. Ya Rasulullah in Medina, you just told us that Allah has promised. And now you are breaking the promise. And now you are telling us to go back to Medina and we have not yet fulfilled this dream. We have not yet performed Umrah, Ya Rasulullah. And the promise is there and this is revelation. So what is taking place? And this teaches us a lesson, brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest of planners. And this is where the Prophet ﷺ tells his companions to shave off their hair to an extent where not one Sahabi stood up. Could you imagine? The Prophet telling his companions, trim your hair or shave off your hair and not even one companion stands up to fulfill his order. And he repeats this order three times. So even among the Sahaba, we attempt to have this weakness that we want Allah's promise right away. But no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned something that we don't understand. And subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, he walks into his house and he tells Umm Salama, I fear that if I would tell the Sahaba to do it for the fourth time and they do not do it, Allah will punish the Sahaba. I fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy my Ummah because they have broken my command. And he tells Umm Salama, what should I do? This amazing Sahabiya, this amazing mother, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She then tells him, Ya Rasulullah, very simple. Go out in front of the people and shave off your hair. And if they see you do it, they're going to do the same thing. So he walks out sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he shaves off his hair. And this is where the Sahaba begin to follow his steps and they all do the same and they return back to Medina. But brothers and sisters, they were able to come the next year. And they were able to show people the Islam that was given by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This journey back to Mecca had its effect on the people of Mecca where you had many Meccans that became Muslim just because of the other journey because they were more prepared. And they were given more promise of peace. And they had a peace treaty with the people of Quraysh. And they walked in and they did the talbiyah. They could have never wished to do that if they would have walked into Mecca. It was impossible. But they came in and they did the takbir, and they did the tahleel, and the people of Quraysh told them, told it, their people, the Qurayshis, leave Mecca because these people are sick. These people have a disease. And subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ tells the Sahaba, begin to run. And that's why we run around the Kaaba, you know, as we begin our tawaf. So they all begin to jog, and people say, no, these people are normal people. And this is where many leaders became Muslims, and this is where... So it shows you, brothers and sisters, that when Allah delays something, it's for a cause that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. For a reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But in the end, always have iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mu'min. He would always keep and protect his promise. And he is also al-muhaymin. He is the controller of everything. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who believe in these two names. Ameen Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad.